What's up, YouTube? This is True Raw 4 TV. All right, so before I get into this video, I want to give a shout out to the brother Aram for the donation to the channel via the PayPal. Uh, long time subscriber, big time fan, the golden era of the NBA. Salute to Aram. So, this was a question that one of my subscribers asked me. They wanted me to give my opinion on whether or not uh, World Be Free and Tom Chambers, whether or not they should be in the Hall of Fame. Now, of course, I want you guys to give your opinions as well in the comments section. Uh, so let's look at this, all right? So let's start with World Be Free. Now, World Be Free uh, was a guard, primarily a shooting guard. He was six foot three and about 185, plant, uh, 185 pounds. Uh, he came out of Guilford in 1972 in the second round, 23rd overall pick, selected by the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, he played uh, from 1975 to 1988 in the NBA and uh, briefly played overseas in 1991, I believe it was. He had a stint from well, with the Sixers from 75 to 78. Didn't get a lot of playing time because the team had a lot of death at guard. Uh, but he really broke out his two seasons from an individual standpoint with the Clippers from 78 to 80. Back then, they were in San Diego. Played two years with the Golden State Warriors. Uh, played four years then with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, played one more year with the Philadelphia 76ers, which happened to be 86-87 was Julius Irvin's last year. Played with the Miami Tropics of the USBL, the United States Basketball League back then. And one year with the Houston Rockets, 87, 88, and that was it as far as NBA career. And then a few years later, he played overseas in 1991 for the Atlanta Eagles. And I have no idea who, who that franchise is with. As far as his highlights and awards, he was an NBA All-Star in 1980. He was on the All-NBA second team in 1979. Uh, he won the USBL championship in 1987. Now, we got to remember, the Hall of Fame is not just the NBA. It incorporates uh, other leagues, international basketball, high school, any but college, anybody that excels at a high level in that respective field, at, at the highest level, is eligible to be in the Hall of Fame. Although I think it is easier for professional players to get into the league, uh, excuse me, into the Hall of Fame. Uh, so he won the USBL championship in 1987. He was the USBL playoffs MVP in 87 and the NAIA tournament MVP in 1973 with Guilford, when he, uh, playing for Guilford. Uh, for his career, he averaged 20.3 points per game. And I believe he had eight consecutive seasons averaging at least 20 points a game. Matter of fact, I believe it was at least 22 points a game. His best season came in 19, I think, 1979-1980 when he was with the San Diego Clippers. I believe that year he averaged over 30, 30 points per game. As a matter of fact, I believe World Be Free is the only non-active player to average 30 points per game in a season and not be in the Hall of Fame. I believe that's the case. Now, of course, we have Bradley Beal playing, and, he, you know, I think he's going to get in because they've lowered the bar so much. Uh, you know, anybody pretty much you could think of right now that has had a season average in 30, they're going to get in. Uh, but World Free is the only one that's not active, that has averaged 30 points per game in the season, is not in the Hall of Fame. He scored 17,955 points. So let's look at Tom Chambers. Tom Chambers was a power forward. I believe he was six foot ten. I think he was two hundred and twenty pounds. Uh, he was out of Utah, nineteen seventy. Uh, excuse me, uh, nineteen eighty one. He was the eighth overall pick in the first round, selected by the San Diego Clippers. So, if I'm not mistaken. Trying to do a little math in my head. They almost became teammates. World Be Free and uh, 
Tom Chambers. But I believe by that point, where we free was gone for about a year when they drafted Tom Chambers. So he played two years with the San Diego Clippers. He really blossomed in his five-year stint with the Sonics. Was great with the Phoenix Suns. Went to an NBA Finals with the Phoenix Suns. Um, played with the Utah Jazz for two years in the mid-90s. Uh, spent one season playing overseas. Tried to make an NBA comeback uh, 1996-97 with the Charlotte Hornets and then the Philadelphia 76ers. But it was just not to be. It was just not to be. Um, just wasn't the same player. <coughs> I believe after injuries and that was it. As far as his highlights and awards, four-time NBA All-Star, NBA All-Star Game MVP, two-time All-NBA second team, uh, Israeli league champion in 1996 with uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv. His number 24 is retired by the Phoenix Suns. First team all WAC. Two times second team all WAC. His number 42 is retired by the Utah, uh, the Utah, was the Utah Utes, Utes. Um, for his career average, 18.1 points, six rebounds and two assists. Scored 20,049 points. Matter of fact, he was the first player to score at least 20,000 points that did not make the Hall of Fame. Um, subsequently, since then, he's been joined by a couple other players. One of them I know is Anton Jameson. And I think another one is Joe Johnson, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Joe Johnson has not made it to the Hall of Fame, so... You know, we may start seeing more and more of that. Guys uh, scoring 19,000, 20,000 points and not getting to the Hall of Fame. So, should these guys be in the Hall of Fame? Well, the reason why I believe that these guys were not in the Hall of Fame when they were playing and when they were eligible initially was a lot of it had to do with the fact that the bar was just so much higher back then. Keep in mind, NBA fans and those following the game were not as enthralled by individual achievement as much as a player's impact on winning. Okay? Remember, Magic Johnson won something like 70, what, 73, 74% of his games? Bird won like 73% of the games he played in his career. Michael Jordan won more than two-thirds, I believe, of the games that he played in his career. Uh, Jordan went like a almost an eight-year span, an eight-year calendar span without losing more than two games in a row in his NBA career. You know, so... It was different standards. And with Tom Chambers, the same thing. You know, he, and you know, you gotta look at the fact that with Tom Chambers, he was a great he was a great power for really good. Um, but his peak level of dominance, if you want to call it that, maybe the late eighties, but it was only maybe a three, maybe four year window. 86 to 90. With World Be Free, you know, it was a little bit longer, but, you know, he was a guard. And, and then we look at the fact that, you know, in that time period, you know, Tom Chambers was possibly overshadowed by better players. Charles Barkley at that position. Charles Barkley, Carl Malone, Sean Kemp, uh, you know, or, or guys who were more successful. Buck Williams, you know, uh, you know, there's some others. I just can't think of top, right off the top of my head. But you know, there was other power forwards that you could argue were more impactful as for either winning, or they were just flat out perhaps more better. They were better players, and it wasn't always a scoring thing. 
you know, um, hell, Roy Tarpley had a lot of a lot of uh, potential, man, before the drug use, the drug issues, man, and you know, I'm trying to think of uh, other guys, you know. Gary Coleman. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Power forwards. I don't want to say Horace Grant. You know what I'm saying? I'm hesitating to say him, but you know, there's some other ones, too. I just can't think of the top of my head. Um, we'll be free. The issue with him was that he put up a lot of points, but it didn't seem to have. He he got a reputation for being like a, a shot jacker. That he he could score a lot of points, but wasn't winning. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when he was with the 76ers, when they were winning in the 70s, he wasn't a big part of the, of the team. Um, but the Clippers they sucked. <laughs> they almost always do. Uh, even though he came in second to George Gervin and scoring twice. Um, then when he was with the, um, who, was with, who was with next? I think the Cavaliers. They were bad. They were really bad when he got there. Now, this is something the World Be Free should get credit for. A lot of times we say Elgin Baylor saved the, the, the Lakers franchise from folding, which is very true. But did you know that World Be Free Save the Cleveland Cavaliers franchise from folding. Things had gotten so bad. Well, not folding. I take that back. It wasn't that bad. But the NBA was seriously considering approving the relocation of the Cavaliers to another city. That's what I, that's what I should say. It was that bad that Cleveland was probably going to lose the Cavaliers. Now, this is after... That team that Bill Fitch coached, the miracle, uh, Rich, uh, the miracle at Richfield, that team. This is before, long before LeBron James. This is right before the rise of, of, uh, you know, Mark Price, Ron Harper, uh, <coughs> you know, Dottery, and, and and that team. You know what I'm saying? They were really bad. They were really, really bad, man. And at the very least, what World Be Free did was be entertaining because he was a very exciting basketball player. Um, and he got people to come back to watch those games. And he at least was an inter himself uh, was entertaining enough to get fans back into watching the Cavaliers. And I believe... You know, a couple years into his tenure there, they started becoming a better team. So, most definitely, World Be Free was a, a star attraction that was bringing people, at least, interesting in people to be interested to come to the games to see something. So, he deserves credit for that. But ultimately, he just didn't win a lot of games, you know? So, that hurt World Be Free in the early play then. Now, should they be in the Hall of Fame when you look at how the, everything's been lowered today? Well, I think that Tom Chambers has a better resume as far as being in the Hall of Fame. I mean, he was a multiple-time All-Star. And, you know, he was the All-Star Game MVP in 1987. Uh, I think during the 89-90 season, he had, like, at least two 50-point games. And I had more than that. But I remember having a 56-point game. And then, of course, the 60-point game against his former team, the Sonics, back in 1990 with the Phoenix Suns. So Tom Chambers was a big-time performer, man. I remember having some memorable performances against the Boston Celtics. Well, Kevin McHale is another one. When I was thinking about power forwards that overshadowed Tom Chambers, Kevin McHale is another one. Um... So, yeah, man, you know, at the end of the day, if you look at the NBA from today's perspective, Tom Chambers probably is a borderline Hall of Famer. So I think if you look at it today, 
You look at his accolades and his accomplishments. Yeah, I guess you would put him in the Hall of Fame. Because today's NBA, you know what I'm saying, seems to revere guys who can put the ball in the basket. Offense. Um, and Tom Chambers, for the era that he played in, was a really good shooter. Not Dirk Nowitzki, but he was a good shooter. Um, but he also possessed athletic ability. We all know that dunk he had on Mark Jackson. Um, so Tom Chambers, man, he, he he was that dude. His best season was probably 89-90 when he averaged 27 points a game with the Phoenix Suns. This is right before Charles Barkley got there. And then, of course, in a, in a lesser role, three years later with Charles Barkley at the helm, that team was able to get to the NBA Finals. So, yeah, by today's standards, I would say Tom Chambers would be, especially in a weak year, as far as um, draftees of Hall of Fame talent, I would put him in first ballot. World Be Free is a much tougher sale because, man, he did only have that one all-star MVP, man. You know, he had that one all-star MVP. You know what I mean? He wasn't a, what you would call a great defender. <laughs> um, and like I said, he didn't have a lot of impact as far as winning. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find World Be Freeze. Career win percentage. Okay, I'm not finding it. Let me see something. Maybe he's a little bit too old of a player for that to be popping up. Okay, so he had a less than 50% win percentage for his career. Now, mind you, that included three years with the Sixers in the 70s when it was going to the finals all the time, you know, or at least conference finals. So 49.9% of, of that's not very good. Man, you know, with World Be Free, man, I have to say... I, I just don't see it, man. I have to put him. I mean, I I do believe he's one of the most underrated players, but man, the one All Star MVP, uh, one All Star selection. The hell with the championships. The hell with that. The the All Star selection. I mean, usually if if you are highly regarded by your peers, you know, say you get to have at least. I mean, sometimes you could chop it up to competition in your position, but to just have one, it's, it's hard, man. It's really hard. It's really hard. It's hard, man. I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. Maybe you could look at the US, the, the, the USBL title and factor that in. Maybe. 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 As, as the bar gets lowered and lower, because, look, if Draymond Green gets in, then all bets are off. If, if Draymond Green gets in and Michael Cooper gets in, and then, you know, look, why not put World Be Free in? But if Michael, if if Draymond gets in, then it's a no-brainer that Tom Chambers gets in. And then, in my opinion, Joe Johnson should get in. And Tom James should get in. Because if you score 20,000 points, that should that used to be Enough to get a guy in the Hall of Fame. So, this is my answer. In the respective eras that they played in, no, I think they fell short of Hall of Fame status. But if we're going to start letting all these guys in, 
like the way they are going to do now. <clears throat> World be free is a possibility. Tom Chambers, much more likely. Yeah, because I think Chambers, when you look at his resume, it's more solid, more accomplishments. You could argue that World Be Free had a longer period of time of dominance. Um, Chambers was a little bit more dominant, but a shorter period of time. But at least Chambers won. Uh, matter of fact, let's see Tom Chambers' win percentage. Yeah, Tom Chambers had a uh, win percentage of 54%. 54.3%. So he won more games. Um, at least I see the second half of his career. Or, or the last... Yeah, the second half of his career, I'd say. So that's that's my assessment, at least, man. You know? Tell me what you guys think. 